at this point, you are all sophisticated enough users of accounting information to know that this number right here really doesn't mean anything. If I ask you how much money we made last year, you can give me that number. If I say, great, how much of it is cash? You have to go blah, 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 blah. So, we need to go from that number, which we all now agree is somewhat fictional, to a number that says, what happened to our cash? I don't know if you guys remember the old movie, Jerry Maguire, Show Me the Money. That's what we're doing here, show me the money. So we're taking that number and we're putting it onto our statement of cash flows and that's the beginning. It's not the end. The orange number is the check number they give you from the textbook and there are three numbers on here that I've highlighted in yellow that you have to begin with. Let me remind you where you get them. This came from the income statement. This came from the balance sheet at the end of last year. And this from the balance sheet from the end of this year. So the nice thing about doing a statement of cash flows is you know at the beginning how much money you're looking for. And altogether, we're looking for the net decrease in cash. You can just subtract those. It's about $23,000, $24,000. So the question is not so much what's the difference in cash. You could, you could have done that in fourth grade. The difference is where did that cash go to and come from? And that's what we're going to do in the statement of cash flows by the indirect method. And the indirect method simply means we're starting with net income and adjusting for things that don't impact cash. So, I started with the net income from the income statement. Kind of sounds redundant, sorry. And now I'm going to go through and going back to my cash flow compass I'm going to explain the change in cash by analyzing the change in liabilities, the change in equities, and the change in non-cash assets. That's the indirect part of the indirect method. We're looking at the change of these three classes of accounts to explain the change in cash. That's the indirect and indirect cash flows. Well, First thing we see is we see we have depreciation expense and we know we're going to add that back. So we're going to add back depreciation. So we're going to add back depreciation of 20,750 and that comes off the income statement. We have a gain or a loss in this case we have a loss of $5,125. This kind of sounds funky. Because we have a loss, we have to add it back to the operating section, $5,125. But we need to then train ourselves to immediately go and make sure we record that loss down on investing activities. So I'm just going to make myself a note that I had a loss of 51.25. We'll handle that when we get to investing, okay? In the words of the late Senator Teddy Kennedy, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. And for anybody under 50, that joke means nothing. Okay, accounts receivable. Our accounts receivable increased. So if our accounts receivable went up, it means more people owe us money. So the credit we took for in sales up here 
we didn't get the cash so the cash has the that has to be a reduction of 15185 because accounts receivable is a non-cash asset so it goes in the opposite direction of cash inventory same story our inventory was 251,000 it's now 275,000 plus change so our inventory went up assuming we're not running midnight auto supply where we go steal things to order we have to subtract it we have to buy it 23,856 20 3,856. Our prepaid expenses went up, which means we've paid expenses this year that we're going to use next year. So the prepaid expenses went up by 625, or went down by 625, excuse me. Our prepaid expenses went down by 625 which means we used expenses this year that we paid for last year so that's $625 worth of cash we didn't use that should be green sorry and our accounts payable went down we paid our accounts payable and any of us who have a credit card know that the way you make credit go away is pay it so when we add those all together we take the 114 we add and subtract we come up with net cash from operating activities of 40,900 okay now we're going to go on to our investing activities so we have our investing activities and we have our financing activities investing property plant and equipment other people's stocks other people's bonds etc financing our stocks our bonds our notes payable our mortgages our treasury stock etc okay now remember that equipment we talked about we got to do some figuring here Okay, so we sold equipment that cost us $46,875. So the equipment cost us $46,875. That was our cost. Our depreciation was $30,125. Our accumulated depreciation. So our book value was the difference zero five seven six if i did that right let me check five seven eight six yay hey, i can still do third grade arithmetic sixteen thousand seven hundred and fifty was our book value now if we sell that for more than that we have a gain in this case we sold it for less than that so we have a loss and we sold it for how much did it tell us we sold it for 11,625. 11,625 sold. I'm going to subtract this $5,125 is the loss. Praise the Lord, another miracle. I got that number right. That's exactly the size of the loss. So this is the cash we got from selling the equipment. So we sold the equipment for $11,625, which resulted in a $5,125 loss. So cash received from sale of equipment. $11,625. Forget the colors, I'm just playing with colors. I'm like my granddaughter I just like colors and then we bought some new equipment they tell us that we bought some new equipment we paid 30,000 in cash 
and we signed a long-term note. So, we have to handle that in two pieces. We have to handle the cash part, 30000 That's cash out, 30000 And we have to make note at the bottom of the significant non-cash activities. Okay, just because you didn't pay cash doesn't mean it doesn't go on a statement of cash flows. It just doesn't go into the numbers on the statement of cash flows. So significant non-cash activities are important. You have to remember those. So our net cash from operating activities. We put these together, 11,625 subtracted from 30,000. We used 18,000. $375 for our investing activities. I may have said operating activities, I meant investing, sorry. Now, they tell us we borrowed $4,000, so that's a cash inflow. They also tell us that we paid on a long term note of uh, what, $50,125? So that's a cash outflow. Now, we sold some stock. How much stock did we sell? 25,000 shares, or 2,500 shares at $20 per share, 50,000. That's cash in. And we paid some dividends, and they give us this, of 50,100. So the cash used from financing activities is 46.225 and that's just the sum of those numbers as this is the sum of those numbers. Now, the net decrease in cash 46.225 subtracted from uh, our beginning cash 73500 gives us our cash balance at the end of 17 so we have to subtract 23 our net decrease in cash was 235 23700 and that's from adding these three together. Okay, so we used our net decrease in cash for the year, it's 23,700. And that's a, a total of these three amounts. The cash from operations, Forty nine forty thousand nine hundred minus eighteen thousand three seventy five minus forty six thousand gives us a total use of cash of twenty three seven hundred. So our cash balance at the end of the year is the difference between twenty three seven hundred and seventy three five hundred forty nine eight hundred. That's how we come up with that number. Okay. Problem twelve three A. Part 1. That was the long part.